Good morning. This is uh, Pastor Brad. It's good to be with you this morning. I trust this finds you well. Um, I know we're all in prayer uh, in our lives. In fact, we're in the prayer room, and uh, one of the things on the wall is a reminder to us to pray without ceasing. We're praying for each other. Uh, we're praying for our churches, people that we love, situations, our nation, our, our leaders, all those things, our workers, those on the front lines who are who are serving medically, people across this land uh, who are in harm's way. So continue to pray. And uh, today we just find encouragement from God's word. Get comfortable, uh, get that cup of coffee, sit down, uh, have your Bible, a notebook, be ready to just write down thoughts, however the Lord might prompt you. And uh, I'm looking forward to today. We are in the Gospel of John. You know, our greatest encouragement is that we just meet with the Lord. And the Gospel of John really is, is about that. It's, it's Jesus Christ coming in the flesh, God in the flesh, uh, living among us and, and modeling to us, showing to us who the Father is, uh, coming to, to be Savior, uh, coming to meet our greatest need. And so we meet with him, and uh, during these times, that's the greatest encouragement we can have. Uh, we always face trouble, we face challenges, and uh, today's passage we're going to look at is, is very relevant to where we're at right now as a nation and what's going on in our personal lives. So uh, we are in John chapter 14. Uh, we're going to be probably in one of the most familiar passages uh, in the scriptures. Uh, there probably aren't too many funerals that we haven't gone to or been a part of uh, where this, these verses are not read. And uh, I want to give you the context of these verses today. I want you to see that they're, they're, they're more meaningful to our life than just that moment that is so precious to us at a funeral. They're meaningful to us every day. And so uh, I think they're going to be powerful to us today. It's a reminder that uh, when there is trouble, Jesus is always here. He's always with us. Uh, he is today. He's with you right now. And that's what John focuses on. As we come to the beginning of this uh, chapter uh, 14, we see in verse 1, we just see this reminder to us that trouble is with us all the time. We can't escape it. Um, we're reminded of the context in chapter 13 and previous. The disciples in chapter 13 have, have met. They're in the upper room right now. The Lord is, is ministering to them one last time as a group. It is the night before crucifixion. Um, Jesus has washed their feet. Uh, he has humbled himself before them in a manner that, that, uh, that um, uh, is going to be transformative in their lives. And he has shown them what love is really like. He's going to continue to show them that love all the way to the very end. He's going to love them completely and fully to the very end, as he does us. And so um, Satan has been wrecking havoc here. Uh, he's been among the disciples. Uh, they've been arguing about pride before they even came into that room. Um, and then and then he, he has led uh, Judas to leave now. Judas has just left in the previous verse, uh, verses, and he's going, to, he's going to betray Jesus Christ. Uh, turn him over to be executed. Jesus has also said that uh, Peter, uh, one of that inner core of the disciples, is going to betray him, and not just once, but three times. Um, and then Jesus is going to mention here shortly he's going away. And so all these things are a real challenge to the disciples. They, are, they know that uh, Jesus very well uh, may lose his life. He has already said that. He is a marked man. He is a wanted man. Uh, the authorities are looking for him. The disciples are wanted men as well because they are associated with, with Jesus. Uh, it, it, it will impact their, their families potentially in every way. And so their fears are just working overtime in their hearts. And how might they handle this and what are they going to do? And so Jesus says here in verse 1, he says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Uh, they are experiencing the trouble, the anxiety, the agitation of their soul. They're experiencing the fears that, that they just keep coming out in the things that they say. Not only that, um, consider Jesus Christ himself in the context because it's very, uh, it's very important that we look at that. In John chapter 11, verse 33, we see these words. When Jesus saw Mary weeping as they're going to the tomb of Lazarus, the Jews who had come with her were also weeping, and he was deeply moved in his spirit, and he was, and he was greatly troubled. In chapter 12, we see these words about Jesus. He's speaking to a crowd just before he comes to the upper, upper room. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this purpose I have come to this hour. Uh, we see that trouble that he, that he is experiencing in his own soul. Then in the upper room right here, 
Uh, after saying all these things, teaching to them, Jesus was troubled in his spirit because he said, one of you is going to betray me. And so he says here in verse one, let not your hearts be troubled. But we see here from, from the words of Jesus himself is, is he also has experienced this, this troubled spirit. But here's the difference. Jesus was troubled yet without sin. Uh, Jesus was troubled in his spirit. Uh, Jesus did not say there would not be trouble. There's trouble all around us. Uh, it is the fact of life. Jesus didn't say that we, that we wouldn't experience or feel the emotions that trouble brings into our life. In his spirit, Jesus is feeling um, the agitation of sin, the, the, uh, in the emotions of going to the cross and carrying the weight of our sin, of, of loving um, the disciples who, who have yet to understand fully what Jesus is going to do, of loving Judas, who is his enemy, of, of, uh, of being willing simply to be the sacrificial lamb uh, for sin. He, didn't, he said, let not your hearts be troubled. He didn't say we're not going to experience trouble. In his heart, uh, Jesus, Jesus experienced the peace of that perfect relationship that he had with his father. He experienced the peace of the joy of, of that relationship. Um, and so uh, his heart wasn't defined by the trouble that swirled around him. It wasn't defined by the emotions that he, that he felt. Uh, and, every, and every element when he mentioned, I'm troubled, he also in that moment expressed and modeled perfect love. He served perfectly. He continued to love. And he showed ultimately, modeled ultimately, the fruit of the Spirit. And, um, and so what are, we to, what are we to do when we, when we experience and we're facing times like this? How do we overcome? How do we overcome the trouble that's around us? How do we do it in such a way that we feel it? Um, but we're not tainted by it. We're not changed by it. Our heart is not affected by it. Our soul is affected. Our emotions are affected. But yet we walk through the, this experience of trouble with, with ultimately the peace of God. Uh, how do we do that? How do we be like Christ? Well, John talks about that this morning. We overcome trouble through faith, through trusting in the Lord. In verse 1, he continues to say, believe in God and believe also in me. Uh, faith is the essential element here. Um, we must believe that God is in control. We must believe that God is, uh, is always good. We must believe that God has a purpose and a plan and a mission. We must take God at his word. And uh, John's going to develop that this morning. See, faith, faith is going to be the victory in our life. Faith is going to be the stronghold in our life. Uh, faith is going to be the foundation in our life. It's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to undergird us and, and support us when we face the trouble and we feel it upon our lives and, and upon our, our spirit and our, and our hearts. When we feel that, that pressure, faith is going to be the key. Romans 8, 28 is a reminder to us that God always works, those who love the Lord, he always works those things together for good in our life. You know, we mention those things as, as pastors and as teachers, and we hear those things as students of the word, and we say, you know what, I, I struggle with this verse, because when I look at my life and things don't, aren't always good, and, and th this, is, this is too often a cliche, and too often we uh, idealize these words. But we have to remember that uh, in the context of chapter 8 here in Romans, when Paul says this, that God is always working out things to his good, it is, in the, it is in the children of God that he's doing that. And the context here is suffering. In chapter 8, verse 18, Paul says, I consider that the sufferings of this present time basically cannot complete, compare with the, with the glory that's coming. But the context here is suffering. Verse 20, he mentions how creation is, is groaning and it's, it's under corruption. It's, it's corrupted because... It's tainted because of sin. We are a part of that creation. So as God is good, he's good in the context of the pain and the suffering that we feel, which he allows for his good in our life. Verse 26, we are weak as we, as we go through life and, and experience the trouble and the anxiety and the tensions uh, that, may, that we're facing now. But the Spirit is there to help us and to be a support to us. So here's a key as we, as we look at trouble. What are we going to do? How are we going to handle this? How are we going to process this? What steps are we going to take? Well, our perspective needs to be transformed. Um, John continues, and he, and he shows us how perspective is everything, how we view uh, the things around us and what are, what's happening to us. The perspective we have on that is everything. For a child of God, John says, here's the perspective 
but it is so helpful to each each child of God. Number one, he says in verse two, he refers, to, he, Jesus uh, now communicates a promise. In my Father's house, you know, you know this passage, it is, it is so precious. Uh, it has been a part of my ministry so many times. I love this passage. What Jesus does here just in these opening words is he communicates something vitally important, that unity matters. Jesus says, this is my Father's house. This is his. Uh, there's, ne- there's no uh, competition. There's no jealousy. There's no territory. Uh, Jesus says, you know what? This is my Father's house. Uh, in my Father's house, where I'm going. He's, everything he does is about his Father. Uh, in humility, he serves his Father. He serves his disciples. Uh, there is a humility there. There is a unity of heart between Jesus and his Father. And so in the here and now, what's important that Jesus is communicating, even in these words, is unity matters. For the, for the child of God, the believer, uh, we need to value unity, uh, the unity that we have with, with Jesus and, and our relationship each day, the unity we have with one another and our, in our families, in our home, with people around us right now. Um, that unity is found in Christ. He says, in my father's house are many, many rooms. You know, that old translation in many, are many mansions. Um, you know, we're not told that, it's, that it is uh, celebrity-sized mansions and, and all those images that we, that we tend to think about. But it is, it is a beautiful homestead for every believer that God is giving to us. And it's, it's an indication to us of, of the riches of Christ towards us. Uh, whatever he's building is sufficient for every believer who will ever trust him. Uh, there is now a room and, and, and sufficient space, but all that the glories of heaven will give to us is beyond words and beyond sufficiency. Uh, every day, as we look, you know, as we look, if we could take time and go to Revelation 20, you would read there in chapter 20 and 21 of, of the glories of heaven. Uh, that is what he's referring to here. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3 promises us today, as we just walk with the Lord, um, Peter says, God has given us everything that we need for life, and for godliness. Everything that we need, he has, he has poured out into our life and made available. Each day as we ask, as we come before the Lord, he has given us what we need. The key is this, is that we come with a willing heart, that we're willing con- to conform uh, to his image in our life so that whatever he pours into our life as a blessing, whatever he equips us with, we are ready to be able to use um, because we are right with God. We're ready to put into action because we are right with God. And so we need to ask, we need to yield, we need to conform, we need to change. That is, that is accessing, that is utilizing, that's used, taking a full advantage of these riches. Also, he says in verse 2, If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? You know, the key here is this, that we can take Christ at his word. As we're walking through these challenges, we're reading the scriptures. We're putting faith in what he has written. We can trust the Lord. We can trust the scriptures entirely. We can trust his revelation to us. It is strong and secure. It is the foundation for our faith. He says also in verse 3, he says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, and he continues on, but what he's communicating here is this. He's going, he's preparing, as he's going, he's going with a purpose, is to prepare. It's to do a work. He's going to be busy <laughs> um, for us. It's a reminder to us that uh, we are his workmanship. We are a work in progress. As he is in heaven today, preparing heaven for, for the children of God, as he is in heaven, uh, building whatever, whatever heaven is going to be for us, a home for us, whatever that is going to be, he is also building his church today. He is building your life. He is using these experiences in every child of God to build something precious and great. He is using these experiences to to build uh, an opportunity for us to grow in faith and to grow in strength. Um, He who who has begun a a great work in your life and mine, he's he's going to continue that until he completes it. That's what he's going to do. We can trust the Lord. Uh, that his plan, his purpose is good. He is building something precious. You know, in my life and in your life, as, as uh, we're adjusting our schedules and they're changing so much, God is still doing something very powerful in our lives if we let him. He is building something beautiful 
and significant and lasting into our character, into our faith, ultimately into our eternal destiny as we will one day be with him. And he says, you know what? I will come again one day and I will take you to be with myself. He promises us. He says, I'm coming back. And we call that the rapture. That's another, that's another message, another sermon. He's coming back again today. He could come today. He could come any time. We don't know when he's coming. Um, but the Lord promises he's going to return. He's going to take his church home to be with him. There are those that we love who have already gone home to be with the Lord. Um, through death's doors, they have stepped into life. And uh, this is a promise. This is the hope of every believer. It's a reminder to us that beyond life is life eternal. Beyond death is life eternal. Uh, this is a culmination. This is a promise being fulfilled. This is a reunion that's taking place. We may hate reunions. We may, we may love reunions. I find reunions to be to be awesome and great. Um, I find times I don't know the people that are there, but the older I get, the more I do. But reunions are a time to be reacquainted with people that we love. We're going to be reunited with Christ forever and for the people that, that we cherish that have gone to heaven already. Uh, is the culmination of everything that he's promised. You know, we're facing a pandemic. We're facing a, a virus that we don't have under control yet. But you know what? We have an opportunity today to meet with Christ still. We're going to be with him one day. And he says, to, he says to us, you know what? I want to meet with you today. I want to meet with you in the middle of these challenges. I want to meet with you. I want to touch your life. I want to change you. We have an opportunity at home right now today in these weeks uh, to meet with the Lord, uh, to grow in prayer and in confidence in talking with God. Uh, we, have, we have the opportunity to grow in the ability to hear the Lord speak into our heart and into our, into our life to grow in faith, to grow in character, simply to take the time to develop our relationship with God. Let's take advantage of that. He says also in verse 3, that where I am, you may be also. This is our greatest treasure. This is our greatest reward. Whatever heaven's going to be like, it's going to be it's going to be a special and beyond words um, because Christ is there. and he And whatever it is, he has made it. He has prepared it for us. And it is filled with, with uh, blessings and fulfillment and satisfaction. Uh, every promise that he has ever made is fulfilled in heaven. Every goodness that he has ever offered is going to be fulfilled in heaven. And Christ is going to be there fulfilling all of those things. We will be serving him and worshiping him. And uh, we will not feel the anxieties and the tension of sin any longer in our life. Uh, we will be devoted completely to him, to love him and to serve him to be with one another, and to serve together. That is our greatest reward. Uh, that eternal relationship, that presence of God, I trust you have that and you know that today. Um, you know, we go back to verse 1. He says, let not your hearts be troubled. He says, instead, believe. Believe in me. You know, faith faith settles the troubled heart. Um, what's going to settle your heart today is trusting God. What's going to settle your heart with, with questions that you don't have answers to, with people that you care about that maybe uh, have the virus or, or may have the virus? What settles our heart is knowing that God is good and that he will take care. He will be sufficient. Um, if people that we love get the virus and the Lord takes them home, ultimately he has given them their very best, life in Christ. Um, we don't know all these things, but we know that God is always good. Faith is going to settle our heart. It's going to give us peace. Uh, Paul reminds us that the struggles that we face from God's perspective, they're light, they're momentary. Doesn't mean he's doesn't mean that he's uh, uh, making light of our troubles. He, from his perspective, he understands that it's just temporary. It's just for a time. Because when we're with God for all eternity, we're going to forget all of these moments and all these things. But we are going to remember. We're going to treasure how we grew in them how Christ was revealed in us through them. We're going to remember the, the precious relationship that we developed in Christ through all of them. He's preparing something great for us. He reminds us that we're to look. We're to look ahead. We look not to things that are seen, but to things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporary, they're transient. The things that are unseen are eternal. We're memorizing some scripture in our, in our church together. Uh, we're going to have a new verse that's going to be coming up. And it's really key to, to this promise right here. It's in Hebrews 12, 28. It's just a reminder to us that we're to be grateful. Grateful for receiving a kingdom that simply cannot be shaken. We're instead to offer, we're to offer ourselves 
to God for acceptable worship. We're to do it with reverence and awe. And uh, ultimately, what we have here is an unshakable worship. Uh, if you are growing in Christ and you are bowing before the Lord and you are receiving his love and grace into your life at home, uh, while you work at home, while you uh, face the uncertainty and the unknown, if you are before the Lord with confidence and faith, there will be an unshakable foundation in your life and it will lead to worship. And I, and I pray that uh, all of us experience the, the love that is poured out to the Lord that comes from a heart of worship. Trouble in our life, it's all around us, it's real. Um, how do we handle it? How do we overcome it? We follow the Lord. We follow Christ. That's what we do. John continues in verses 4 and 5, and he, and he reads, says this. He says, you know the way to where I'm going. Of course, Thomas says to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus sets this up. He, he makes this comment. He knows, he knows that, they, that they don't understand. But he opens up the door so that so that he can lead them to this discussion and, and guide them in in their hearts and in faith. And uh, Thomas says, "We don't know. We don't know the way. We don't know the future. We don't even know where you're going when when you leave here. We don't know what's going to happen. We know the authorities are after you. We know that they want your life. We don't know what's going to happen. If you're going to go back to heaven, we don't understand that. If you're going to if you're going somewhere else, we don't understand that." And so we, we trust the Lord. So Jesus, Jesus responds. Jesus says to him, you know what? Right now we have the opportunity. Uh, it's, it's maybe chaotic in our house. Maybe it's quiet in our house. Uh, we need to find a, a place of quiet, a place of just uh, allowing the Lord to speak into our heart. When the Lord speaks, have we listened before? Uh, do we have the habit of, of hearing uh, from God's word? of hearing from the Spirit of God, use His Word in our life. When Jesus talks, He wants us to listen carefully. And he's, He responds here to the believers, to the disciples. He says, I am the way. Um, how do we know that? How do we know that He is the way? Well, in this verse, we just see that because no one comes to the Father but through me. Uh, salvation, He is very clear that salvation is through Christ. Christ alone. He is the only way to a relationship with the Father. He is the only way to heaven. Uh, it is exclusive to Christ. There is no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. There is no other name um, by which we can trust to earn our way to heaven. It is through Christ alone. It is not our works. We cannot earn our way. We cannot, uh, we cannot do enough good to get to heaven because sin has tainted all of that in our life. The only way is Christ. And so, if we know Christ today as Savior, then the same thing is simply true. As a believer, we have to follow Him. He's going to guide us. He is our Good Shepherd, John chapter 10. He will lead us each day. In fact, He says here in John 10 that He is the door. We enter into that relationship through Him, and then we go in and out as He leads us, in and out into that pasture. We go in and out into the experiences of life, under the guidance and protection and love of Christ himself. He is, he is the way uh, through faith in his provision of salvation at the cross. That is the only way. Through faith that he is the only provision, that nothing we can add to the mix does any good. John 14, 6, he continues, he says, I'm the truth. He is the standard for that relationship. He is the way. And so he tells us what that way is. He is, he is the truth. He is the standard. He communicates to us what that way is. Uh, this, is this is how he does that. In his word, he communicates what, what that truth is. He communicates how we can have a relationship with Christ. Um, with that truth, he sustains us and he guides us. Uh, he protects us. Um, every day, he leads us. He, he ministers into our heart through the truth of his word. John 1.14 reminds us that Jesus was the Word that created all things. He was with God. It reminds us that, uh, that uh, He is full of grace and truth. Uh, he is the source of truth. He defines truth. As we learn in this world, every day we're learning. We're learning something new. We're learning from, from our professors. We're learning from life. We're learning from people around us. Uh, we're, learn, we're learning as we read, as we receive input into our life. Ultimately, the only, the only information that comes into our life that is true is that information which is in harmony with the Word of God. doesn't mean that it's only religious information, 
but it is information that, that affects our worldview, information that is in harmony with the teaching of God's Word. Truth is from His Word, is from His heart to us. And so we, we take everything else that we pour into our life, and we sift it through the grid of God's Word. And so we determine that what we're hearing or what input we're receiving, is it true? Because does it, does it harmonize with this, with your Word? He reminds us in John 8, if we love His Word, if we abide in His Word, if we spend time in His Word, then we are truly His disciples. We will know the truth, and that truth is going to set us free. It's going to set us free uh, from, from bondage of anxiety and fear that sin wants to hold uh, on us from, the, from the, uh, the, the tension and trouble that our own flesh brings into the, into the equation. Truth frees us. It changes our perspective. It shows us the heart of God. It shows us the love and the grace, the sovereignty of God. It shows us there's a God who's in control, and He is taking care of us in good and in bad. He is there, loving us, showing us our eternal future, which is beyond description and beyond words. He says, I am the life. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. You know, to follow the Lord, to come to the cross, to receive forgiveness of sins, is to find life. It's to, it's to come to the cross in death and to leave with life. It's to be transformed. It's to have a certainty about where I stand with God. It's, it's to know that, that He accepts me in Christ. It's to know that He has a relationship with me in Christ. It's to know that I'm now a part of the family of God. That is key. There is new life in Christ. John 17, 3. This is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. It's interesting here how life is, is tied complicitly with truth. They are together essentially important. The way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the source of that life. As the Father gives gave the Son, as the Father has the life of salvation, so has He given that to Christ. It is the Lord to whom we turn. You know, we see the tension here, the troubles that are that we face. Here's the tension, John 10, 10. The thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. Uh, our adversary, Satan, the devil, there's only one of him. He can only be in one place at one time, but he has an army that works for him. He takes advantage of our flesh. He accentuates the, the battle that temptation brings against us uh, that's in our flesh, but there's only one of him. But the point is, his goal, his desire is to steal your joy today, is to destroy uh, what God is doing in your home. Uh, it's to bring havoc into your home or into your heart. It's to bring doubt into your heart. It's, it's, it's to say to you, God's out of control. God doesn't know what he's doing. If God was a, was a loving God, why would he allow these things? You know, we see, we see the word of God show us and remind us that, uh, that sin is the reason why these difficult, challenging things happen to us. And God is always there. Uh, our adversary's desire is to, is to undermine everything that God's trying to do. Jesus says, but I've come that you might have life and you might have it abundantly. I've come that you might have the joy and the peace that sustains you. I've come that you might have a purpose that rises above your circumstances. I've come that you might have a glimpse into, into an eternal destiny that is far beyond the temporary here and now. Peter said these, asked this question to the Lord. He says, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Because the teaching of Christ was so hard, there were those who were leaving. There were disciples disciples who are leaving the Lord. And uh, Jesus said to them, or to his disciples, are you going to leave me as well? Peter says this beautiful response. He says, there's no, one, there's no one else we can go to. You are the one that has the words of life. The good news is life is in Christ. The good news is it's about Christ. Uh, whatever happens to us in these times, we know that Jesus Christ is sufficient. He is the giver of life. Um, we have a message to share. We have a message to live. We have a reality to model in our life that because we have received the gospel, that we have a life then to share. We have a life to be excited about. We have a life to convey. A verse that we've been working on in Acts chapter 26 reminds us that uh, when the good news takes hold in our life, the Lord has opened our eyes. He sends us to be ambassadors, to be messengers of that gospel. 
And he reminds us that then that when we receive Christ as, as Savior, when we when we take that step, there is there is uh, the essential element of us turning from our sins, turning from darkness to light, turning from the bondage that we that we experience under Satan, and turning to the power, the freedom of Christ. We we also receive that forgiveness of sins. We receive a relationship with the Father for the first time. We are brought into the family of God among those who here it says are sanctified or are set apart by faith in Christ. The gospel is just good news. And uh, the good news is this, is that Jesus Christ is powerful. He's able to not only sustain us, he's able to do that because he's able to save us, um, to change your life, to give you a hope, and to give you a future. Easter is coming in a few weeks, and this passage is still relevant. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Uh, we are aware of people who are losing their life because of the pandemic. People we may yet know that may experience that. Maybe ourselves. We don't know. Are you ready if that experience comes to you? Are you ready to, to walk with God if that experience comes to somebody that you love? Are you ready to, to hang on to the Lord and to trust him, to know that he's good? Are you ready to say, God, it is to you I'm going to run. It is to you I'm going to stand on. It is to you I'm going to place my hope. Lord, it is you that is going to be my peace and my rest. I trust that's true today for you, that you have that relationship, that foundation in your soul through faith in Christ. That is the essential. If you've never put your faith in Jesus Christ, then times like these are unnerving in every way. Uh, they shake us to the very core of who we are. There is a fear that is unshakable because it may affect me and I could lose my life. Am I ready to lose my life? Am I ready for the end to come? No, none of us want to die. And yet for the children of God, he has said death is just a, it's a graduation. It's a next step into glory. It is to be that which we are to long for and to look for. Uh, for the believer, there's a confidence. Whatever happens, God is with us. God may, God may bring us through these times and um, protect us completely. I can guarantee you that what he will do is he will grow you if you let him. Uh, he, will, he will sharpen your faith. Uh, he will grow your ability to be strong and to be vibrant in your relationship with God if you let him. Uh, don't let the enemy bring chaos into your heart, or into your family, into your home. Let Jesus Christ bring peace, the unity, the trust that faith brings. Um, if you need Christ, give your heart to him. Confess to him your need. Confess to him that you're, you're a sinner that he is the only one who can, who can forgive, receive his work of love and grace that he died for at the cross. Um, know that he wants to save you, to join into a relationship with you, to give to you the promises of eternal life. That's our prayer for you, and that's our hope for all of us who are in Christ. If you have a question or a desire to talk with us, feel free to do that. There's information here that you can follow up, and, and uh, we'd, we'd love to talk with you. We'd love to follow up. Um, let's bow our heads in prayer, and, um, and then we will finish our time together. Lord, we thank you for this day. We are, we are in uh, uncertain times. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen in our nation, to ourselves, or to people that we love. But we do know, of, uh, Lord Jesus, that you're in control. Lord, you have a purpose and a plan. In all things, you reveal the grace and the goodness of God. You reveal the sufficiency of a Savior. You reveal the only one who can step into a dark world and bring uh, light. You are the only one who can come into our life in, in moments like this and truly be the difference maker. You are the one who can give us the joy and the peace that we so desperately desire. You are the one who can bring the enthusiasm of genuine worship before you. God, do that, we pray. We will give you the glory for that in Jesus' name. Amen.